Hey, it's Adam here for another What's New in Mix Effect. Today we're going to talk about Mix Effect 1.09. Without further ado, let's get started. First off, there's some bug fixes. So if you're used to using the Supersource Visual Editor with the horizontal and vertical constraint, you'll now know that when you move your boxes, your boxes don't magically realign themselves to the grid. Second, if you use locked box sources with one of your presets and you have uh, enable crop turned on. Let's see, my mouse is not moving. Let's try this. Let's go back here. There we go. Sometimes when you're using Mix Effect, the interface suddenly kind of like freezes. I don't know what's happening. All you have to do is just go back out to another section and then come right back, and then you'll be able to scroll. If you have enable crop turned off, and you had you use box sources turned on, when you went to the preset, you'll notice that the enable crop gets reactivated. So that was a bug that's fixed in 1.09. Hyperdex, if you have the Hyperdex turned on and it's recording, the timecode will display in red now before it was in white. And second, if you wanted to turn on the Hyperdex record warning, when you tapped on it, sometimes the box didn't turn red immediately if you're not recording, but now it will turn red immediately. So I'm going to reset my preset right there, bring myself back to a box, and let's talk about some of the new commands available in Shortcuts and OSC. So the first thing is I've added support to send OSC messages from MixEffect. So that's right, you can now use MixEffect kind of like a pseudo stream deck using Shortcuts. By being able to send OSC messages, now you can talk to other devices that use OSC, such as H2R Graphics, another mix effect that's running on the network, or any other of the products that support OSC. So in this case here, I'm sending an OSC message to the same iPad that this is currently running. And all it's going to do, it's going to, um, it's going to do an auto transition, because that's what Macro 17 does. So if we just run this. It does an auto transition. And I'll do it again. It does an auto transition. So that's running on the iPad itself. But what happens if we had it on an iPhone? So here's my iPhone. I'm going to bring myself in. And we have the exact same shortcut. It's calling the mix effect slash macro OSC message to whatever device is at 10.0.1.40, which in this case is the iPad down here. And it's going to say run macro 17. So you tap that and it runs macro 17 on the switcher. Now, obviously, you could have just went to the macro section here and just pushed 17, and then that would have done the auto transition. Or you could have bound uh, a macro command to the stream deck. Okay, But what's cool about that, this is that now, if we go back to the iPhone here, and actually, let's bring in the Mac Mini. Here we go. So I have H2R graphics listed right here. And I'm going to bring in the iPhone so you can see what's happening uh, in real time. Actually, let's, yeah, that's right. I'm going to bring in the iPhone. So let me just crop this and then crop this and bring in the iPhone. Here's our iPhone right here. So I'm going to run this. OSC shortcut called OSC lower third, and we'll see what happens in the green box here. Uh, and again, this is running John Barker's H2R graphics on my Mac mini. So I just tap this button here, and voila, it just appears. Tap this button, changes the lower third. If I want to clear it, I can tap OSC clear shortcut. If I want to show the ticker, I can do that. If I want to hide the ticker, I can do that. And if I want to send the timer message, there we go, live stream starting in seven hours. If I want to make them all appear, I can just tap this and tap this. So you can see now how you can create shortcuts that control other applications that support OSC. So for instance, in this case, this clear message is sending uh, the HR graphics slash clear command to my Mac mini, which is at 10.0.1.141. And it's listening to uh, OSC messages at the port 8181, and I'm sending no arguments. But an example of sending the lower third, sending H2R graphics slash lower dash third with the argument of one, and that will tell H2R graphics to get lower third number one and display it on screen. So watch that, and there it appears on screen. 
So that's an example of the uh, sending OSE messages using MixEffect. And we gave examples of running macros and also controlling another application like H2R graphics. So another thing that I've added is a bunch of commands to control your switcher and to get details of your switcher and to control a Blackmagic web presenter HD using shortcuts. So in this case here, ATEM setup, this is running the get details of um, get ATEM setup details, and also it's calling the send ATEM setup command. So first thing I'm going to do is enter the IP address of my ATEM mini extreme. Looks like I got an error there. Let's see what happens if I do this again. There we go. And I get a bunch of things. And I coded this up specifically for this example. So I can change the switching mode from program preview to cut bus, and this will change it on the actual hardware itself. So I like program preview. I'm going to keep it like that. Got a little error there. That's OK. I'll just run this again. And let's say we want to change the button brightness. So I'm going to set the button brightness. And right now it's at 15. Which you're going to click cancel for a second, because I'm going to bring in my iPhone. So let's bring in box 3. Let's move this out of the way. There's box three, and then I will be able to reposition it like this. So box three is actually, the way Supersource works is that box one is always on top, box two is next on top, box three, and then box four. So you can see how box three is uh, hiding behind the other one. So I'm just going to move it out of the way. I'm going to move my picture up. I'm going to make this a little smaller. You just be able to need to see the uh, the camera here, which I'm going to bring in right now. So let's see if this rotates. It doesn't because I have rotation lock turned on. There we go. OK, so you can see button brightness is now set at uh, 15. So now I'm going to run the ATEM setup command. I'm going to paste my IP address. And I'm going to set the button brightness to 100. And you'll see what happens. Click done. The button brightness just went up to 100. So I prefer it at 15. So I'm going to just set it back to 15. And there you go. Got a little error from the ATEM, which kind of shuts down the shortcut. That's OK. So we're going to bring this back in. So another command that I've added is the send web presenter command. So this one works uh, in the following manner. So I'm going to do a search for web presenter. So again, you need to give the IP address of the web presenter. And unfortunately, uh, the web presenter that I have doesn't work at the moment. I need to get a new one. Uh, but if you go to the web presenter PDF documentation, they show you all the commands that you can send to the web presenter. So this, this API is very similar to how I send hypertech commands. You basically set the IP address, set the port, and the default is 9977, and then you send the command. So a command for a web presenter might be start the stream. Or it could be upload this streaming configuration file so that you can have multiple kind of streaming destinations. Or you maybe might want to set the bit rate for your web presenter. Now you can do that all from within shortcuts. So if you have a web presenter, I encourage you to take a look at that action. And delete this shortcut here. So another one is the uh, get ATEM network interfaces. So this is. One thing that people have been asking was, how do I get the MAC address of the ATEM? So the get ATEM setup details shortcut actually retrieves all the information. And then you can use the get ATEM network interfaces action to retrieve the MAC address for the Ethernet, uh, Ethernet chip that's in the ATEM mini extreme. So not all ATEMs support this Ethernet protocol. So you want to see if yours does by just running these shortcuts. Um, I know all the newer shortcuts, sorry, all the newer switchers support this Ethernet protocol. So ATEM mini lineup does, but some of the older switchers may not do that. So one more thing that's enabled in MixEffect 1.09 is some quality of life improvements. So if you use the if you use MixEffect with a keyboard, you know that you can hit command return to do an auto transition or command shift return to do a cut. And you can do that from within the switcher interface. But now you can also do that from within the transition, upstream keyers, and downstream keyers sections. Um, 
So definitely if you're using the keyboard a lot and you're in like changing settings in the transition section and you want to quickly do a cut or an auto, you can now do that from here. So in case, in this case, I'm going to set the transition to dip. I'll hit command plus or command return. As you see, it does a dip to black. If I want to do a wipe, do that. Actually, I have to set this one to wipe. Hit return. And that does the wipe there. I prefer mix, so let's go back to mix. And you can also do that from the upstream keyer as well as the downstream keyer section. So that's it. All the features, improvements, and bug fixes in MixEffect 1.09. I hope you enjoy the release. And if you have any suggestions or comments or bug reports, please leave them in the comments below or send me an email or go to the MixEffect community page to learn more about how you can communicate with me. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.